In this video, I'm going to take you behind the scenes of a car commercial I shot for Mazda in Morocco. I will break down everything for you, from how I planned the shoot, how I got a lot of unique shots, and how I edited certain transitions. For you who don't know me, I'm Eric Hedenfalk. I'm a travel videographer from Sweden. A couple of months back, I got asked by Mazda to create a short film documenting a talented tile maker in Morocco named Jamal. To find a connection between the tile making craft, Morocco, myself and Mazda. To integrate all these elements into the video, giving the video purpose and to tell a more fluent story. With the goal clear, I could now start with the pre-production. Mazda is Japanese and in Japan they have this saying, Takumi, which basically means master your craft to the fullest. A philosophy Mazda shares with both Jamal and I, always aiming to push the boundaries of our craft and creativity. Jamal's connection to Morocco is the most obvious since he's from there, with a personal history and cultural experiences. On the other hand, my connection with Morocco is a little bit less clear. Luckily, I visited the country 18 years ago, an experience that left a long-lasting impression on me of how talented the craftsmen in the souk were, as one of them created this necklace for me from scratch, just in front of my eyes in basically a few minutes. With clear connections, I now have to strengthen these bonds visually. I put together a mood board and a shot list where I mix different components in the video. Finally, I put together a bunch of questions for the interview with Jamal, making sure to throw in a few that can resonate back to each component in the video. It's not easy to have two cameras in front of your face and 10 people watching in silence, so envision yourself a few ideal answers to your questions beforehand so you know what direction you want to lead the interviewee. Now with the pre-production done, it's game time. Time for the filming. To be able to tell the story right and visualize all these connections, we had to make sure we have enough film locations on the list, starting with downtown Marrakesh, a place that signifies the essence of Moroccan culture and filled with crafts, perfect for the story that we want to tell. In a chaotic place like this, it's important to be a bit spontaneous and keep an open mind. <coughs> what happened, man? It's the dust from the... <coughs> It's COVID. No, it's the dust from the streets, man. We want to document the different crafts here in, in Morocco, and this is one of them. And one of the most visually pleasing ones, of course. Uh, so we're looking for different textures, for instance, uh, the circle. It's important to look for unique perspectives when out filming. So when I saw the ladder, I knew I had to get the scene from a top-down view. Most people are very happy to be on video. Maybe not perhaps the face, but what they're doing, like the crafts. So we just found this beautiful, beautiful vignette of the uh, alleyway. You are the gimbal god. The gimbal god right here. Well, everything is just lining up. Uh, I invested in a macro lens for this trip actually to get these very, very close ups. In Morocco, you will notice so many details. There's so much design and precision behind everything. The inner life in Morocco. <laughs> I'm not made for this country, that's for sure. In this clay ground. Shit. <laughs> oh shit, no. No. He's always performing in front of the camera. <laughs> actually, it hurts. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> With the more generic Morocco shots out of the way, we wanted to make sure to get most of the car shots in the morning the next day. I was afraid that getting these clean shots of the car in the most picturesque streets and iconic buildings was going to be the most challenging task of the trip. As in so many other occasions, our best shot was to wake up as early as possible the next morning to film sunrise before the city woke up. So, getting the car shots now, we're on the tuk-tuk with Eric. Woo! To film from another moving vehicle, it's crucial to take these shots to the next level. You can try to run with the gimbal, but it just never looks the same, no matter how smooth you run. As you want to have a high speed taking these shots, as the motion blur on the ground and the things flying past the car just adds so much more dynamic and suspense to the shot. I personally prefer shooting in 25 FPS when I film cars, unless I know for certain that I want to slow down the clips afterwards. This because if you have the shutter speed right, you will achieve some beautifully silky smooth motion blur all over the clip blurring out everything except the car, isolating the car in a beautiful way. I made sure to mix the smooth, elegant shots with the more in-the-action and impactful shaky zoom lens shots. It's good to cover both, as it depends on the sequence you're making in post, which one to prefer. I'm personally a sucker for the smooth, elegant shots though, and keep in mind, you can always add camera shake in post, not remove. 
With the car shots out of the way, it was now time to document Jamal in his element and the unique way he creates his tiles. Just got to the, to the factory here, had a little bit of a tour to get settled in. The idea would be to turn off the lights, we can work with the natural light from outside. We don't really want to use these LED lights because it leaves like a yellow tint. So we have a, like a little bit of backlight with the windows here. Uh, we have this as the, the key light from the right side to give a little bit more of a dramatic look, as well as highlighting his crafts, what he's doing. So this is the location they actually mix the colors. As you can see, it got no depth, it's messy, and the wall will limit the amount of angles we can get. Because of that, we decided to stage a new location with more of the factory in the background, some backlight and additional depth in the shot. In the stage location, I also had more space to move around, allowing me to capture more angles. As you can tell, set design and choice of location is a very crucial part. Bro, can you elaborate what that paper is? That <laughs> shot list? It is a shot list. Uh, it's good to have this uh, way get a set. There's a lot of things to keep in mind. You can always come back to a little bit of sense of security with a shot list. Uh, so we're gonna use this as a transparent surface. Yamal is gonna pour these colors on top of this and I'm gonna have the camera underneath to get a unique perspective. We have this red color. It's similar to the color of the Mazda car. That's what I'm looking for when I'm filming. I'm looking for elements that look very similar. Through that, find easy transitions. Probe lens right here. It's a very oh, special kind of lens, this one. What is it and what does it do? Basically, it's like a macro lens, but you can, it's a wide one. So macro lens is usually 100 millimeters, but this is a 24. You can get really close to stuff. Um, so in this case, we used it as kind of like part of the, of the spoon. Are you having fun using the probe lens? Man, it's so much fun. Look at the shot. Let's break down one of my favorite effects I created with the help of the probe lens. As you can see, we used it to get a shot moving in between the tiles. The key to this transition is that both clips are moving in the same direction, in this case backwards, and that we have a very apparent clear square in the first clip that we can easily mask out. I finished off by adding a wiggle effect and some motion blur. As you can see, this special lens opens up new creative opportunities. Here, we've been filming for the last four hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, this is the new vlogging setup. CJ, what do you think? What's up, guys? <laughs> How does it make you feel to see other creative people, craftsmen, that are just doing their work? He's so locked in when he's, uh, he's creating these tiles. You can see how focused he is, and I can kind of feel a sense of, of uh, similarity in the way I behave when I'm filming. Like, I'm so locked in, and everything around me gets a little bit blurry because I'm so focused. Very, very inspiring. Let's quickly break down a second effect. In this one, we want to highlight how he's proudly showcasing his work. And instead of just showing one of the tiles in this clip, I decided to make the pattern of the tile flicker. This is actually a lot easier than it looks to pull off. You just layer your different pattern on top of one another by using the effect corner pin, like this. And then make them disappear or appear one by one by a normal opacity change. Oh, Darren, uh, our driver. He just messaged us that said he's stuck. Help, I'm locked in the ladies' toilet. Oh, Are you kidding me? I'm not, I was fucking locked in, like, it doesn't happen. 10 minutes have been in here. Question one though, what are you doing in the ladies' oh, bathroom? Someone was in there. Maybe there's a reason you shouldn't go in there. Yeah, that, you have paper on your head. <laughs> so, that's Darren. Be <laughs> back soon. What you have to do your head. <laughs> Next up is the interview, a very, very crucial part of the process of the video. If the answers are disjointed with the visuals, the entire concept and thread through the video will be lost. It's the middle of the day. We are currently in the shadow because we don't want the harsh light. But a way to bring contrast into the frame anyways is to add some lights. And we're gonna have one of the lights from the side to bring a little bit more contrast in the face. And then we have two cameras. Here we have uh, more of a close-up. And then we're gonna have one in the middle. I'm gonna stand here with the other camera. Filming midday is generally something you want to avoid as the light just isn't as appealing as when the sun is low and soft. But sometimes you just don't have a choice. We were faced with the same situation later in the day when we were filming complimentary clips around the city with Jamel. General suggestions though, if there are some clouds, try to film when the sun is hidden. The clouds kind of works as a softbox, making the light more appealing. 
Film in the shadow and lighten up the subject with a reflector instead. And be creative with backlights, silhouettes, use close-ups, anything to avoid making it look too harsh. With interview out of the way, we had the afternoon to match anything specific that we wanted to highlight from the interview and Jamal's answers. In this case, I decided that I wanted to match the visuals with how inspired he is by the ocean. I also found this to be the perfect opportunity to film the final clips of the video, having Jamal reflecting back on the experience. And now, instead of sketching the inspiration he gets from the ocean, He's now sketching the master car and how its design have inspired him and his work too. The last location of the trip had to be the desert. This for adding on the Moroccan vibe and getting some wider shots of the master car driving a bit faster in vast landscapes, as this was something we were missing. Yeah, like this. Bringing a drone into Morocco is close to impossible and getting the right permits is very difficult as well. So therefore we contacted a local drone pilot to help us out with these final shots. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate and answer all the questions on my videos. Uh, so if you have any questions, if you have any feedback, any ideas on future videos, uh, please let me know. And with that, thank you for watching. Much love. Bye. I told you I'd get you back. Holland. <laughs> <laughs>